Now, I said Texas didn't really believe they would win this case. So what exactly was it? Was it just a waste of time? Uh, I think it kind of was that Hail Mary pass, like cross your fingers, hoping it could work kind of thing. But what was it really? What will the history books look back and say this possibly was? Like what was the precipitating event about what's possibly going to happen in the future? Well, first off, you got to know it wasn't just Texas. Look at these orange states. Joining Texas, there's 17 additional states. Missouri, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, and West Virginia. All filed a joint brief. I don't have Florida listed in there. I don't think I said it, but it's obviously orange, so I'm sure they jumped out. I did say it. Um, they all joined this joint brief with Texas. And you look at it, it's very regional. Uh, it's very convenient. They're all kind of aligned. It's all middle America against the coastal elites. Coast is blue. They're opposed. The middle, it's all red and orange. I don't believe they were setting out a legal case to overturn the election. I think history will say what they were laying out is a moral case for secession. Why do I say that? I'm gonna read from the actual legal brief. And if you're historically astute, these words should sound very, very familiar to you. What they wrote is that our constitutional republic has endured for nearly two and a half centuries based on the consent of the government. That consent is grounded in the confidence of our people in the legitimacy of our institutions of government. Among our most fundamental institutions is a system of free and fair elections that we rely upon. And any erosion in that foundation jeopardizes stability of our republic. Now here's where it gets even heavier. Fortunately, the framers of our constitution provided for this moment. It is now the duty of this honorable court to objectively review the facts presented by the plaintiff in this historic case, render judgment upon the unconstitutional actions in the defendant states, and restore the confidence of all Americans that the rule of law will be upheld today and our elections in the future will be secured. That's really the first volley in a civil war. Um, <laughs> They're basically giving, well, instead of telling you what they're giving, if that didn't sound familiar to you, I'm gonna read from another document that is, I won't say identical, but extremely reminiscent. Well, I hope you recognize this one. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have been connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to that separation. Now you gotta remember, we won the war, so we call it the War of Independence or the Revolutionary War. Uh, had we lost, it would have a name like the uh, colonial civil war, the civil war of the Americas, because that's what it was. It was, we were rebelling and having a revolution against our legitimate government at the time because we decided it has lost its legitimacy. And it was for a hell of a lot less than mucking up an election. So I continue. We hold these truths to be self evident. Now it was assumed that England shared the same values as the Americans, but they were just falling short. Now imagine if your enemy or the other party cannot even agree on these foundational, self-evident moral principles. You have even less in common. So I would argue that the American right and the American left has less in common than the American colonies did with the English. <laughs> this is, uh, that all men are created equal. So that's a self-evident point. It's still clear to everyone on the right that all men are created equal. Now to the Marxist left, their whole premise that surrounds all of their uh, woke 
intersectionality and all this nonsense they do is that there is an inherent inequality in America and that they're the ones who need to seize control of government in every aspect of our lives so they can rectify that inequity with systematic equality. Now, we'll go further. That they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Now, the notoriously materialistic, atheistic left believe that rights are expendable in their pursuit of that Marxist version of equality, which they now call social justice. That among these are life. Do I even have to go there? Because we know what the abortion happy left thinks about life. Not a whole lot of respect there. Li liberty and the pursuit of happiness. 2020 brought us COVID and has made it abundantly clear that there are two diametrically opposed philosophies as far as what it means, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Now the worldview of the right thinks that we are all adults and we all have the right and the responsibility to eke out our own living, to go out and work, to provide for our family and to give our lives meaning through labor. Now on the left, they want to be a nanny state and are perfectly comfortable arbitrarily destroying the economy and destroying people's lives because they think it's in the best interest of you and they can best decide your happiness and your safety. Now, because this is on YouTube, I cannot say that there is a ton of evidence that has come in with all sorts of chicanery and tomfoolery in regards to this election. So I won't say that. I won't say it's a shame that you probably don't know that because of the media you listen to has silenced and censored it. And I'm not going to say it because this is on YouTube. And if I were to say it, already been threatened by YouTube, that I will be censored yet again, cut off, eliminated, and maybe my account deleted. Uh, what I can say is that there is definitely widespread suspicion that there was voter fraud. So I'm not saying I'm not presenting the evidence for it because that's actually the problem. If you present the evidence, I'm just doing a sociological analysis that half the country believes there was widespread voter fraud. Um, and we also know that the same media that is not reporting any of that told us point of fact that Hunter, La Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation and now reveal that he's been under investigation since 2018. We also know that that same media told us that it would be an absolute miracle if a vaccine was ready in 2020 and that Trump was just lying to the public. But surprise, surprise, that also is now available in November. And all I have to say is psychologically, censorship does nothing to quell suspicions. If anything, it justifiably foments them to a much greater degree. So back to our declaration that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness.